Hey guys, wherever you are in the world watching this, I really hope you're well and safe. Um, just a quick disclaimer, this video was actually filmed about four weeks ago, okay, before the lockdown was introduced here in the UK. So just bear that in mind when you're watching it. I hope you enjoy the video and we'll come back afterwards and have a look at a few of the pictures. I hope you enjoy it. So the plan was today to come out and do some wall camping uh, in Snowdonia with my mate Matt. Grantikins is down there who now lives in Snowdonia, he used to live in South Wales with me, he now lives in Snowdonia, the git. And Jason, who is around here somewhere as well. And the plan was to all come out and shoot a full day and then wall camp tonight, only using a 35mm lens. See how we're shipped here, see how we get on. And apologies if you can't hear. That waterfall in the background is really noisy, so yeah, not the best place to start a video. And uh, yeah, we've just got here, a few candid snaps. And I went to put my, uh, my brand new X100V on my capture plate, which is on the on the on the on the, uh, on the hip there, it fell straight off the damn cam off the thing as I was walking in it. So I've dented the top of my camera. I'm quite heartbroken, but the it's uh, <laughs> I feel like I've only had it two weeks. Is it the is it the floor? Uh, it's got a dent in the top of there, which I'm absolutely devastated about. I'm, I'm laughing about it. I really shouldn't be, but the um, the UV filter on the front of it has actually saved the lens because um, yeah. That's fell. That's got a nice scratch on the front of that UV uh, UV filter. That's obviously saved the lens. So I don't know what it is about me. I seem to break things <laughs> so easily. Oh. So anyway, it's going to be a really, really good trip. Um, today's Saturday. Going to camp tonight. We're going to find a bothy in. Um, I'll put a screenshot of where it is on the map because I've no idea. It's Grant's idea. Uh, so we're going to find a bothy because the wind tonight is supposed to be about 70 mile an hour wind. So it's really not going to be camping conditions. We've got tents and all that with us, but. It's probably going to be find a boffy and chill out. <laughs> what we don't carry in tents, we can bring in beer. So this video is also obviously all about shooting with a 35 mil, having fun with just just li the limited focal length 35 mil. Oh, the waterproofs. Yeah, 10.5 kilo. Where are we going, Grant? Uh, we're gonna dull in Bothy, <laughs> Dull in Bothy? Yeah. Well, you've been here before, haven't you? I have, once. And was it nice and uh, peaceful and relaxing last time we were here? It was beautiful. It yeah. was wonderful, it was serene, it was calm. Uh... Uh, not quite as nice as it is today, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, the wind last time was howling. Uh, 70 mile an hour winds hitting the walls of the Bothy. Uh, the, the so rain... you wimped out on the tent then? I didn't even bring a tent, I knew there was no way. If the was full, I was walking back to the car. Yeah, that makes sense. And today we've decided that we're going to make our bags as lightweight as possible. And also only shoot 35 mil, see how, just how uh, liberating we can be without the uh, the weight of all the extra lenses. And of course, because the weather's so bad today, we left tripods as well. So apart from Matt here, it's cheating and he's using a 28 to 200 million millimeter Olympus lens. We're all going to fix the lenses to 35mm equivalent just to see how how we get on, just to make our bags as light as possible. <laughs> what we got? Wow. Oh, here you go. Look at this, the master bedroom. Anybody seen the Wi Fi code?
Damn it, it's cold. <laughs> it really is cold. And I left my gloves in the bothy, annoyingly. But there's a photograph here. There is a photograph here, definitely. Really, really challenging with a 35mm, but I can get it. It just means I've got to climb on one of these rocks. Um, I'm going to climb on that rock down there. I lie down, get the camera really, 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 really close next to in the water, as close as I can. And uh, yeah, just, but the, the difficulty I have, because um, obviously this doesn't have IBIS, so I can only go to about a hundredth of a second re reliably to get a sharp image. So I'm going I'm to go to a fiftieth of a second. I'm not expecting the image to be that sharp, but at least I'll have some motion in the water. Now, I know the point of this trip was to make our bags as lightweight as possible. And obviously if we'd bought a tripod, this would be easy. <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying the challenge. You know, I'm not expecting the pictures to come out amazing. It's just really, really good fun. And uh, yeah, it's different because it don't want to always be easy, does it? So uh, yeah, I'm going to lie on that rock now, 50th of a second. Probably going to be about F11, F14, focused at the hut in the background. I'll see if I can get Matt to do some filming for me. <laughs> Wish me luck. I hope I don't drop this camera in. It's not had a good trip already. Look at the poor dent. Oh. Let's see if the food is waterproof. Yeah. Well, this is handheld at 60th. It's going in, isn't it? One of us is going in. Hard shot to balance. There's a bit of movement in the water there which goes round, which I really like. But I don't think 50th is, uh, is slow enough. A 50th on this is as slow as I go. F11, 50th per second. Fun though. <laughs> well, look at this. You see that? How cool is that? Really, really like these little waterfalls with the bothy in the background. And this one's nice because it's got this detail on the rock in the foreground as well. So really like this shot. Yeah, 35 mil. Again, not quite wide enough, but I can make it work. I'm going to make it work. Sorry, that's a bit bright in there. What's going on? But yeah, it's uh, it's difficult because I'm handheld. I forgot. I've, I've actually forgot I had my polarizer, the tiny little polarizer for the X100. So I've put that on just to get rid of a bit of the glare, which because it's handheld anyway, the glare weren't really bothering me. Um, but I thought, you know, it might, it might, it might sharpen the image or it might give it a bit more clarity. So I thought, I'll put the polarizer on anyway, see if it brings out any of the detail in the clouds. Um, but with this shot, because I feel like I've, I feel like the, the foreground is a lot more dominant than the photograph, so I want that sharp. So what I've done is I've taken some photographs focused on the bothy in the background, and taken some photographs focused on the um, on the big boulder next to where this little mini waterfall is, just to see what's going to work better. Because normally I sort of, on especially on a crop sensor, I sort of focus to infinity. And um, especially with street photography, focus into infinity around f8, f11. Anything more than two meters in front of the camera is normally sharp enough. But because this boulder is quite a dominant part of the subject, I thought oh, I need to make sure that's sharp. So I've done a few, 50th of a second, handheld, um, about, f11, about f11, I think I've forgotten now what I was on. <laughs> f11. Um, yeah, just making sure that the, the foreground, the most important, the most obvious part of the photograph is sharp because. 35 mil you're not really pushing the bothy away too much but it and it's still obvious in this in the, in the photograph but yeah i, I want to make sure that that dominant part of the photograph is sharp so yeah 50th of a second isn't quite slow enough to get this motion in the water uh, especially because the water's not moving that fast but yeah it's be really, really really nice photograph i'm really pleased that you know i'm not bit, i'm enjoying the 35 mil experience just walking around looking for shots of 35 mil i'm really enjoying it um, yeah definitely gonna do a lot more of it for landscape photography anyway Morning, Grant Kins. How was your sleep? Uh, it was broken. Disturbed broken. By, broken. Broken in a broke back kind yeah. of way. Or? <laughs> Disturbed by occasional snoring. Occasional snoring. It was relentless. Couldn't hear it when I was sleeping, though. No, that's no, because you were too busy snoring. <laughs>
to get out of the way. Hey! Oh. <laughs> That was such a cool trip and obviously being locked down now and having our sort of freedom and our ability just to roam and go anywhere we want um, really, really is uh, good to look back at our video thinking it was only a few weeks ago and look at look at the ability we had just to roam around and go anywhere. But yeah, really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll just wander through the pictures now. Um, I actually got a few pictures I really, really enjoyed um, and I've with same with street photography, I find the 35mm um, field of view liberating in a way because it means you're just not thinking about your camera so much. So yeah, with landscape photography, it's obviously more restrictive because you need, um, you don't, you normally not, there's, there's never one single focal length that you kind of restricted to uh, with landscape photography. So it was a bit of a challenge, it was enjoyable though, I did enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, it was it was really nice. It just enabled me to be um, quicker and, um, and, and, and find details that I would normally probably set up a tripod for and that sort of thing. So yeah, um, we'll wander through the images now and have a look I mean just having the the f2 nice and sharp on the x100v um, is just amazing just knowing I mean this was shot at f2.2 you can see in the top right hand corner of the screen um, oh incidentally this is Adobe bridge a lot of you guys ask me what um, software I use to view these and th it literally is just rating software though it doesn't really do anything other than that um, so you can see the stars at the bottom um, but yeah this is Adobe bridge so if we just wander through really like this shot um, love the way I should have come further back I think um, but that pretty much is from the from the uh, from the camera so f2.2 crop sensor gives a nice depth of field as well at 2.2 so yeah I um, I really really like that image I think I was focused on the fire I think I was focused on the fire just to get sure the details were right um, but yeah nice nice ambient shot that love the black and whites off the Fuji anyway but just little ambient shots just um, around inside the uh, thing as Grant chilling out just as we got there so yeah really happy with that um, love these shots of Matt um, putting getting his coffee together as soon as we pretty much as soon as we got there he got his coffee out and started um, sorting that out so yeah it was really nice because he had this directional light coming off his of his head torch uh, which picked out the um, the utensils he was using as well so yeah it worked really well um, especially like this with the steam coming up through the light um, f2 again 160 of a second ISO 3200 so yeah just basically keep it's really important to keep an eye on the histogram because obviously where the light comes down and hits his hand I don't want to be clipping any area of the photograph at all so just making sure the histogram is not clipping um, and anything that's black just let go black really really like that picture another example there but yeah again just keeping an eye on the histogram for his hand looks a tad bright there but the histogram says it's nowhere near so yeah these are cool um, just a few snaps around the around the thing I mean even when the guys rocked up and uh, we, we got chatting everybody had a laugh and got to know each other it was fantastic just the outdoorsy people you meet are just unbelievable so yeah really nice to meet these guys as well um, yeah they're uh, really really nice characters uh, I just really like the light the way it was falling on the side of his face there with everything else being dark around him um, yeah I really did like that top top guys these guys rocked off with massive shopping bags full of stuff it was unbelievable how they carried all that all the way up to the car park uh, from the car park to the bothy was unbelievable so yeah hell of a lot of wood they brought with them um loads of food and stuff and loads of beers there was even they, they were offering pint cans of, of beers around to people as well so they must have been carrying 30 kilo each <laughs> great lads though great lads yeah, I love the, the again. Just what I, what drew me to this is just the way that the light was catching the smoke off his burger. So yeah, really like that. Uh, but yeah, four thousand ISO this shot and one hundredth of a second is pretty much as low as I'll go shutter speed with the X one hundred because it's because I always shoot double, well a minimum of double what the shutter what the focal length is. So it's a thirty five mil equivalent full frame. So we'll double that at seventy. So just to be safe, I always round it up to about 100, 125th of a second. Uh, again, I think these are all shot at the same ISO, same shutter speed, f2, 100th of a second. Uh, but yeah, just looking for where the light's picking out details and stuff. This is uh, Jason sat next to me having his pot noodle or whatever he's eating, his, his, his um, exhibition food. So yeah, it's really, really nice the way the black and white uh, highlights basically just frames that nice highlight. Really like that shot. Um, yeah, cool shot as well because the guy taking his soaking wet shoes and socks off. So I, I like that. I just something about it the way the light's shining in, in his face. Yeah, I'm really, really, really pleased with that shot. But it's nice to be able to shoot at f2 
and get these details with the, with the new camera. Really, really enjoying the, the new lens on the X100. Uh, but yeah, cute little pup. Uh, wasn't loving life though, he was a bit cold, bless it. So uh, yeah, he's trying to wrap itself up in blankets. <laughs> um, yeah, 35mm for landscape photography isn't perfect. It could probably do with being a bit wider, but to be honest with you, if you've got that challenge, it, you can make it work. I didn't really struggle that much. I thought I was gonna, as soon as I sort of seen this composition, I thought this is gonna be difficult to get in 35mm, but I was actually quite happy. Um, it's pretty much got everything I wanted. It's got this leading line of detail coming in from the bottom left. Um, the, the bothy is balanced nicely in the top right. They didn't need any more sky in it anyway. So as far as lens choice goes, I think I would have been happy with 35 mil anyway. So yeah, I really like that. Um, I wish I'd have been able to go slower than 50th of a second. Is that one? That's 60th. This one's 50th. Um, I thought they were both the same actually. Um, just to get a bit more motion in the water. Now, obviously I haven't got Ibis, but it would have been nice to have gone down to about... Uh, 20th or 10th of a second just to get that motion in the water there really would have uh, really would have liked it a bit more there but I think that tells the story just the same I think because it's 50th you're getting this detail around here so I don't actually dislike that at all I just um, yeah it would have been interesting to see but it is a sharp image as well at 50th of a second it is actually sharp um, I think oh, it's a tad soft no that's sharp that's sharp there. I missed a focus on that rock. I thought I'd focus on that rock. No, that's definitely sharp. Yeah, so it's just out of focus there on that rock. But no, it looks fine. It looks fine. Really pleased with this photograph. Um, yeah, what I decided to do is take a photograph of say, this section here and then move the camera just to the left and take another photograph, just including the, the, the stone on the left and merge the two together. Um, and it was literally only a, about an inch on the picture. And it's, it's obviously not difficult to do in the slightest, very, very easy. Um, and yeah, this is at 40th of a second with, with the camera rested on a, on a lump of dirt. So worked out well. I love that bloke coming out there to uh, have his coffee or whatever he's doing in the distance. I think that made the picture um, really, really added a lot more depth to the photograph so yeah almost like a silhouette in the background give a bit of scale to the building and yeah i really really like it it's funny because the sky had nothing going on that was interesting um but obviously you, you look at this that sky and you think that was a long exposure just because of the the softness of it uh, but yeah that was just literally the, the um a grad in lightroom doing that it's uh, a bit of bit of dehaze bit of clarity and that that was it yeah really good but obviously very important just to keep an eye on the histogram so that you knew that all this detail was going to be here um when you come to edit it but yeah i like that oh that might be the that's the single shot version of that that's what that is so that was the original shot which i, which I still liked but then when i seen that one slightly to the left i just really liked i really like this rock on the left hand side um but yeah this is weird because the house is bang on in the middle I normally you wouldn't do that. You'd normally try and put it on a third, but it doesn't bother me at all. Let me know which one of them you prefer, actually. And, um, I think I think I prefer the one on the left. But yeah, I think I prefer the aspect of the one on the right, the shape of the one on the right. Yeah. Again, I think these are all, all the colour ones are classic chrome, Fuji colour anyway. So um, yeah, the pop in the morning, still not loving life. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get home, bless him. Um, the, the horses are always easy to photograph because they're just so charismatic, so beautiful, and they're in such an amazing environment. But these ones are really, really shy, and I just don't want to go up to horses, wild horses that you know live in the area and that, that they're so terrified of us. You see, so it's their house. I want to, I want to respect that. So we got a few snaps, but they they were very, very scared of us, so we we didn't want to interrupt too much. But yeah, I do really, I love the wild horses in, in Wales. They're gorgeous. They are. But just using this foreground rock in the bottom was really, really nice. Uh, focused on that focused on the horse uh, so this isn't quite sharp enough really in the bottom but it doesn't really matter I think it's just a I think it's just a um, a nice bit of foreground interest just to balance the photograph but yeah muted colors really really nice really nice <laughs> and then there's the end video picture Matt massing around so yeah um, but yeah <laughs> 
So super, super good trip, really enjoyed it and obviously made better by the fact that the people we were there with, uh, Matt and Grant, uh, you've probably seen in previous videos, are really, really nice guys, uh, very, very outdoorsy, so they're really, really good company. Um, and the, again, the guys that we met in the Bothy, super, super nice, so yeah, it turned out to be an amazing adventure. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a few minutes of, it, of escaping uh, what's going on in the world. So yeah, I was a bit nervous putting the video out because obviously everybody's in lockdown and I've seen a few videos that people posted and when they've they've obviously been they've been filmed at during the time of lockdown and obviously people were people not responding particularly well to that. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of the pictures. Let me know which one's your favourite and um, I'll see you again soon. Hopefully this won't last too long and I'll be able to get out and do some more adventures in the near future. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button, drop me a comment and I'll see you again soon. Take care guys.